Yo, 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 what's going on, world? This is your boy Najee from Cigar Talk. And today I got a very special guest, man. Seated to my left. Hey, this is Mr. Puerto Rico himself, <laughs> man. He got the big fight coming up. I got my man, Zan Desires. What's up, Najee? What's going on, you, brother? Man? How are you? Man, nice to be here with you today. Yeah, man. Yo, listen, I've, I've been watching your career for damn near since the beginning. You know what I mean? And kind of watching you progress. And now the moment, you know, you're headlining for sure, for the sure. fight, Madison Square Garden, New York City. Like, what does it feel like? To be here man it's it's something that you always dream of as a kid you know um, obviously the mecca of boxing new york puerto rican day weekend me being puerto rican you know having a big um puerto rican community here in new york obviously the people traveling from puerto rico um even florida a lot of people is traveling so it, it's great to yeah. to see my dreams become reality only at 21 years of age mm -hmm. fighting my first former world champion my first main event puerto rican weekend what else can I ask for, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Mark Teixeira, you know, like you said, former champion. He's a, you know, good fighter. Got a pretty good resume. Uh, this is definitely a step-up fight. When you are looking and just sort of analyzing his game, what do you what do you see? Like, what does he bring to the table that you kind of like, all right, I got to... Man, um, I feel like he he's wide with, with a lot of his shots. You know, he's come come wide with the, from the bottom and to the top, yeah. vice versa. Yeah. Um, doesn't punch straight so much, you know, so I can take advantage of that. Um, Obviously, my angles, yep. you know, in a way, his old legs compared to mine, 21, yeah, yeah. are going to are gonna pay dividends, I feel like, <clears throat> in a middle, middle fight, um, just change the angles, just don't stay in front of him. I feel like that's going to be key um, to win the fight. Yeah. Um, how was training camp so far? Like, how do you feel like training camp's been Man. just in terms of, like, you know, your preparation and weight? Um, weight is, is comfortable. We're, we're good where we, where we want to be right now. We've been here for, for the whole week. Um, I have my nutritionist with me. I'll be, you know, obviously fight um, week of the fight with them. Weight is good. Training camp starting next week will be tenth week of, of training camp. So yeah. it, it was a long training camp. It was a, a great training camp. I feel we made all the adjustments. Um, we brought in um, Brian Polaco. He, he Puerto Rican went to the Pan Am. He got I think um, bronze medal. Okay. So he got a lot of experience. Now yeah. he's a professional. Um, so I feel like we, we're, we're ready. We're yeah. going to show the world that, that we're one of the best 154 pounders. Tell me about, let's talk about weight real quick, because I think now um, the conversation, the weight and rehydration clauses and things yeah. like that is like a thing that everybody, you know, the fans are talking about. Uh, what do you feel like as far as, you know, what you walk around at versus, you know, where you're fighting? Man. Um, you're at 54. Yes. Um, what, what do you think? Like, as far as how much weight do you consider, like, or do you care about that, like weight bullying and stuff like that? I don't really care because I get big. Yeah. I get big for, for fight night. Um, obviously, I walk around like 170, 178. Okay. So, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put a clause on somebody yeah. else, and I wouldn't allow somebody else to put it on me, right? Because okay. I, I like to walk, again, I like to go into the ring big. I like to feel, you know, huge. So mm -hmm. when I go in there, I try to bully them. Yeah. So if somebody would say that to you, like, yo... Xander's weight bullying or whatever. Like, do you care or nah, it's just like... That's, that's just part of the sport, you know? Um, yeah. At the end of the day, we, we got to fight. Um, sometimes weight doesn't make the difference. It just it comes down to skill and, and, and wanting it. Yeah. No, so, sure. um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like weight should be an issue ever. Right. Okay. Um, like I said, is you know, this... You, when I'm looking at you, bro, and just sort of the reception from the Puerto Rican community, it feels like you're the next guy, right? <laughs> and I love because, you know, I'm from New York, you know what I mean? So I be in the Bronx sometimes, all the Puerto Ricans up there, and it's like Puerto Ricans have this energy that, you know, they surround their their guys, sure, like they really come sure. and put on, and it feels like you are the one that's like the next guy that they're looking to prop up. Do you feel like that? Do you feel Man, that energy of I'm I, the next one? I feel I feel the love. Um, I wouldn't be able to tell you that, that, that I feel like I'm the next one because at the end of the day, that comes down to them. That comes down to the fan. That comes down to 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 everybody that supports me. You you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but I do feel the love. I do feel the support. I was in the Bronx last week um, at a cultural festival over there, and it was amazing. They showed me a lot of love. I signed a lot of autographs, a lot yeah. of pictures I took. Um, it was it was beautiful just being out there with with, with the people um, and, and getting to meet them. Right. You know, a lot of people told me that they were going to the fight. Obviously, people from Puerto Rico too. Uh, I mean, it's been a great great love from from the get go from the from the first fight. Um, but I wouldn't be able to tell you, oh, and sit here and tell you, oh, yeah, I am the next one. Yeah. Time will tell. 
Does that matter to you though? Because it's like I, I would say, all right, before you, the last guy I felt like that Puerto Rico was embracing to be the guy was uh Felix Verdeo. Yeah. Felix, you know, obviously his story got crazy. Yeah. But you know, before he lost and took the L, he was the guy that it felt like For he sure. was at the level that a couple of more big fights that he would have won, he would have been the star. Like, Definitely. you know, Miguel Cotos yep. and Tito Trinidad. Is that something that you want? Like to be embraced in that way where like you are the figurehead for oh, Puerto definitely, Rico? Oh, definitely, definitely. That's something that, you again, you, you grew up dreaming about it. You want to be that next star. You want to bring that glory to your island, to your people, to everybody that, that, that supports you. Um, and, and I want to do it. I'm working towards it, but I wouldn't be able to tell you when it's going to be that time, when that time will come. Um, I feel like the people will keep embracing me, will keep showing love, and little by little, They'll, they'll show it. They'll let, they'll let us know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you're doing it right. Like, I see you with all the Eladio, you know, yeah, Eladio's yeah, yeah. my man. So I was like, okay, you're putting it together. You know yeah, what I'm man. Um, you know, I feel like in Puerto Rico, uh, the culture of just Puerto Ricans are, are just to show love to each other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we always, it doesn't matter what you do, baseball, soccer, basketball, you could be in the rap game, yeah. obviously boxing. We always try to show support each, to, to each other because... We come from a little island. You right. get what I'm saying? We come from a little place. And to be to be recognized around the world is big to us. Yeah. So I feel like we show a lot of love and a lot of support to each other. For sure. I mean, I, I definitely see it. Like, you know, we in the Sony building. It's my office, like my day job. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, we got artists like Bad Bunny and El Audio here. That, so I'm able to go to Puerto Rico and kind of see sure. it. Um, tell me about that. Like, where you're from in, in Puerto Rico? Like, well, I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Okay. So, to be more specific, Santurce. Yeah. Um, that's that's the one of the main area in, in San Juan. Um, I grew up there, was born there, grew up till I was 11, 12, then moved to Florida. Mm -hmm. I've been there ever since for Lauderdale. Yeah. Um, and yeah, man, my, my, my childhood in Puerto Rico was, was amazing. That's where I started boxing at five years old. Yeah. I was being a victim of bullying. My mom put me in boxing to, you know, just learn how to defend myself. I fell in love with it. Came over here, I want to say around age 11, 12, and that's when I kind of figure, okay, like, this is what I love. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to be a professional at this. So when you say bullying, right, like, what, what does that look like? Is it just, were well, you a small kid and they were just picking oh. on you? Like, when you yeah. say, tell me about the bullying, like, like, like what is that? Because like you're a big not, guy. Yeah, it don't like, look not, like, but that's, that's I'm about to bully like, you and yeah, all. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, people, like, see me now and, like, how do they bully you? you were, yeah. I mean, I was so little. I was little till freshman year. Freshman year, I was 105 pounds. Mm. So you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I kind of like then got a, a growth spurt. I, I grew, I, I gained some weight, yeah. some muscles. But before then, I was little. So back in Puerto Rico, we always used to play around and, and be, be outside all the time. And bigger kids would just come up to me, hit me, or call me names. And it was like, it got to a point that I didn't want to, do, to be a kid anymore. I didn't right. want to go out. So um, that's when my mom decided, uh, okay, you got to learn how to defend yourself to at least right. get some confidence. For sure. So tell me, what was that first period like? Like this is, so I'm, the period where you're doing it for self-defense and not this is what I want to do in life. Like what, what do you remember about that? Like Man. first walking into the gym, you just trying scared. to get. I was scared. Mm. The first time I walked into the gym, I was scared. I didn't want to be there. I mean, I'm getting punched. <laughs> you know, yeah, and right. I, like nobody want to get punched. I, I want to get punched in my neighborhood. What would I want to get punched now for fun? Right. You get what I'm saying? So right. at the beginning, it was definitely scary. Um, I remember I had a girl, um, like one of my main sparring partner was a girl. Mm. She used to beat me. Man. Oh yeah, she used to beat Damn. me. <laughs> yeah, she used to beat me. And one day I was like, man, this is it. I either beat her or right. You know, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta put a stop to this somehow. Right. Um, so yeah, at the beginning it was it was really scary. Um, cause obviously I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to get punched anymore. Um, but then I kind of like got confidence off of it. You know, um, I went to school and now it's like, now you can tell me anything. You right. know what I'm saying? Now I can right. fight. Now I can at least defend myself. Um, never used it against anybody though. Never, uh -huh. never went never back to- Never had a fight? Did you no, have a I did, I did fight, but it was just, you know, stupid kid fights. Yeah, yeah. Um, but never went back to my, to the person that bullied me and, and try to, Show him like that I was, it. you know, yeah. that I learned how to box. Right. Never, just never felt like it was something I needed to do. Yeah. He knew when, once I started fighting, because I was more confident. I was, so he knew, I like, was, if yeah, I can't I, Yeah, do yeah, it. I was talking back to him. Right, so, right. So, um, 
Yeah, I feel like at the beginning it was scary, but then, you know, you kind of fall in love with it. Where is he now? You know, do you know who he is now? No, to like, be honest, to be honest, I don't know where he is. Did he DM some, you? Like, can no. I come to the fight? Like, yo. <laughs> no, he had some, somewhere in Puerto Rico for sure. Yeah. Um, never, never got a chance to speak to him again after I left. So, um, but we did become friends after, after, that? after that. Yeah, okay. for sure. All right. So, all right. So you, you went, you was in Puerto Rico, you started learning and you come um, here to Fort Lauderdale. Um, what was the point that it transitioned from like, yo, this is just something I'm doing for self-defense or fun to like, oh shit, this could really be something I can do with my life. Well, in Puerto Rico, I fought 85 times. Oh, like amateurs? We, yeah, yeah, amateur, amateur right? fights. Okay. Like okay. we fought 85 times because in Puerto Rico, <laughs> we used to fight every weekend. Mm. That's like the tradition. Every weekend you go somewhere else and, mm. and fight. So I feel like after winning maybe my, my first national in Puerto Rico, I was like, okay, like uh, I could be good at this, you know. Yeah. Um, my first fight, I remember, it was in, in Cupay Alto. That's where Tito Trinidad is from. And oh, okay. he was there. Oh, he was, he was there. Oh, yeah, so I, I know a, you had the, yeah, I got put a it picture, on? Yeah, I got a picture <laughs> with him when I'm like six years old. Oh, shit. Um, never had a chance to meet him now as an adult, as a, as a you know, as a professional. I, you know, wish mm -hmm. I, could, I could meet him soon. But um, I think after that first national title, that's when I was, okay, like, pretty good at this. I, yeah. I mean, I took out a whole bracket and, you know, yeah, I was little. I was maybe seven, eight years old. And those guys just weren't as, as talented as me at the moment. Right. Um, <clears throat> but that's when I decided. That's when I was like, okay, I'm good. But I really decided I wanted to do this like at 12 years old. Like that's 12. When, that's when everything changed. I made the, I made the transition from, from Puerto Rico to here. Yeah. Started going to nationals. I started seeing how everything was. Um, I started taking it more seriously. Because at the end, you know, at, at the beginning, um, you just... You win a lot of championships and a lot of national titles, but we just you just have to have a little bit more talent than 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 others, right? right? Because not everybody's working hard, not everybody's putting the work ethic. If you had a little bit more talent, you was gonna excel in everything, right? right. But then it got to a point that people had talent, yeah. and everybody's they were working, good, at and them. they were working hard. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So after seeing that transition where I got stuck when I first came here, I started, you know, I got in a losing streak, maybe four fights in a row. Yeah. And it was because I was just talented, but wasn't putting the hard work. Mm. And I had a conversation with my dad, and he told me. I, I also remember I used to go to Puerto Rico every summer. Okay. I'm um, just to you know <clears throat> spend time over there. Mm -hmm. I used to come back, you know, out of shape and stuff. And we had the conversation. He's like, "Do you want to do this in all seriousness, or do you want to just do it for fun so we don't you know we don't we don't waste time?" Right. Because I also have a sister, so they had to split time for both of us. My parents did. Um, he told me, I'll give you a couple months. And right there, I told him, hey, like you serious, this is what, I, this this is what I'm going to do. I want to do this. I want to take it serious. I want to I want to put the hard work in and I want to I want to be the best. Hold on. So tell me about that transition. Right. Like you said, you, you came from Puerto Rico. You was winning there. You felt that. What was the difference? I guess I know you mentioned hard work, but what did you feel like was the difference in the amateurs in Puerto Rico versus the amateurs in U.S.? Like one of the big difference was that in Puerto Rico, they're looking for for that for that boxing skill where it's like, I touch you, I don't get touched, right? I can, I can hit you with two punches, and as long as you don't hit me, I win, right? right? Where here, they're looking for more aggression. They're looking for somebody that is gonna throw a lot, that is gonna, mm. it's gonna be in the front foot, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's very minimal fighters that you see that are good boxing, that go far here in, in the United States. They are good, I mean, Shakur Stevenson, yep. Andrew Ward. I mean, yep. you get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. they are good fighters, but they most like, most most of the time they look for that aggression so i just making that transition at the beginning was was hard because i wasn't used to it i was used to you know being in my in my back foot and just boxing yeah. boxing from the outside and and having to make that transition to all right i gotta bang a little bit more i gotta sit there a little bit more right. it was a bit difficult at the beginning so all right bring me to your <clears throat> your pro debut because I, I remember your pro debut um I think you had braids at the time if mm -hmm. i'm not mistaken you had braids i did have braids yeah, the blue had, hair. yeah the blue hair yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You had braids um, what is that like? Like, all right, this is, you know, my first one. I'm a pro, obviously trying to make a statement. Like, what do you remember from your pro debut? Man, um, like now I can say it before I couldn't, but I was nervous. Mm. I'm not going to lie. You know, it's your first, it's your first professional fight. Yep. You, you only get one of these. Um, obviously at 16, the youngest ever, I wanted to impress not just my team, everybody, the company, um, the fans, 
everybody that was watching around the world, I want I wanted to impress. I wanted to let them know, okay, this sixteen year old this sixteen year old is different than any other sixteen year old you know. Right. So I was nervous. I was like overthinking everything, like what if it doesn't, what if it doesn't work? And you know, obviously you sit down with a the team, they they relax you, hey, let's do this, you're ready, you know what to do. You go in there and you forget about everything. Once you get once you get hit the first time, you're like, okay, now like now I'm in, fighting. Fight. Now I'm yeah. fighting. Right. I'm not know what I what I what you know, now I know what to do because I'm used to getting hit. Right. So after that, after that bell um rang and, and I got the first hit, I'm like, okay, I can't now yeah, I can no. break him down for yeah. sure. So tell me because I mean that was that's also a part of your story, just being, you know, your age, right? Like you started at sixteen, you're only sure. twenty two now. Yeah. Um did you ever feel intimidated by the age factor, right? Because it's fights that you got to go up against yeah, grown yeah. men. Like, no, nah, n- never, never did. But I feel like I also never did because my team put me to spar at an early age, 12, 13. I was sparring professional fighters in fifth grade in Miami. Mm. So, you know, like all those Cubans, all those Italians, all those, you know, all those guys that they don't care if I was 13 or if, if you're in the ring with me, you're going to have to, you're going to have to box. Right. Um, so just being in that position where I had to not learn how to survive because I, I was able to compete with them, but being able to take a, 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 a man punch right. at 13 years old is right. different, right? So I was, I was never, never been intimidated by somebody um, because of age or because of how they look or anything. I feel like at the end of the day, we're mans. You know, you mm-hmm. bleed just like I bleed. You got two hands just like I have two hands. We're going to see who's the best. Right, right. So tell me now, um, you know, you're 22. They say, you know, man strength, right? Like you get to a certain age where, you know, the strength just naturally changes yeah, just yeah. by, you know, your body growing. Do you feel like you've gotten to the point that the man strength is kicked in? Yeah, definitely. I feel like it's kicking in for sure. Um, I see it too. Um, my team always tells me, you're growing. And uh, I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah. But now I look at myself in the mirror like, man, you got him big. You, see, you right? get what I'm saying? <laughs> you got him yeah. big. And, and yeah. the same thing when I punch somebody. Um, I could tell, like, that was a good punch. Hmm. Before, it was like, it was a good punch, but I feel like I could I could put a bit more into more, it, right? Yeah, and right. now I sit down more in my punches. Now, um, you know, I feel more confidence in just bullying somebody, walking somebody down. Yeah. Whereas before, it was like, not, not, I didn't feel, I didn't feel intimidated again, but it was like, okay, like, I got to be, I got to box more, right? Now I could box, but also when it's time, just go in there and bang and finish everything off. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely feel um, the men's strength kicking in. <clears throat> okay. Talk to me about the Olympics, because I know 2020 was a moment that you sure. wanted to yeah. go to the Olympics. Um, didn't happen. Um, how big of a deal was that for you, just, like, wanting to actually make the Olympics? Was that something like that was a goal? or? That was definitely a goal. Um, you know, as an athlete representing your country, um, just going out to the Olympics is something that is going to be in the history books forever. You know, you're going to be in, in the history books. That's it. it. doesn't matter what you do after. You're going to be in the history book of the Olympics. Um, didn't happen. I was too, um, too young to qualify for the Olympic team. And I didn't want to wait for 2024. I wouldn't be here sitting with you right. talking um, about my first main event. Right. So right. I feel like, you know. It was something. It was a letdown for for myself because obviously I wanted to do it, but at the same time it was the right opportunity to sign a professional contract at 16 years old, make history, and just start developing my professional career. Yeah, tell me why. I mean, obviously you signed a top rank, Bob Arum. What was it? Because fans like to talk about the business too. Yeah. That's one of the things. If you're on Twitter, they always be talking about people business yeah, and how they, yeah, yeah. you know, promoters and things like that. What was it about top rank and Bob Arum that made you feel like, all right, this is the best? fit for me man let's go back in history all the champions that are now promoters and even the ones that are not that became champions and superstars they all came in from top rank mm. Muhammad Ali yep. Manny Pacquiao mm-hmm. Floyd Mayweather yep. Miguel Cotto I mean I can name them hey, I can keep naming yeah, you get know what yeah, I'm saying yeah. so it's like at the end of the day it's they the know how, yeah the history they know how to build champions they yeah. know how to create world champions they know how to develop them they know how to make them superstars so I feel like that was the right fit. A lot, a lot, a lot of, uh, I had a lot of other um, promoters, but I knew that this was the fit for me. This is who I wanted to sign. Obviously, when the opportunity came, I didn't think twice. Yeah. I mean, I would think now, and again, I don't know contractually whatever your situation is, but I would think just you come into the point that it feels like 
you, you know, you're, you're on the edge of, you know, you, you're turning from prospect to where you're going to start looking at world champions. For you sure. know what I mean? Um, are there fighters now at 54 that you have in mind? Like, obviously, we can't look past, you know, For Teixeira, sure. but are there fighters that you have in mind that you, you know, they're kind of on your board now? Like, all right. Man, and, and, and you know, and I don't, I don't think of, I don't think of fight, you know, you got to, you got, we got to think of it as, as the business too, the business side of it, right? Fights that make sense that we could for sure make happen. Yeah. And two names that come into mind because obviously the rankings and our fights that I think we can make happen is Erickson Lubin Ooh, and, um, and Josh Kelly. Mm. Those are two fights. They're on top of me in the rankings. I think there's um, three and four. I'm number five in the WBO. Yeah. Those are fights that we can make happen. Those are fights that make sense. And those are fights that will put us in an elimination bout to see who's going to fight for the world title. Yeah. I feel like those two names are the, the most, like the ones that are more realistic for maybe the next fight from, from, from this one. Yeah, I agree. I like those names too. Those are some really good fights. Josh Kelly in for particular. Sure. Um, Eric Salubin, tough guy as well. Um, yeah, those are some def- definitely some good fights. And they, I mean, they, they, they have also experience. I mean, we talking about Eric Salubin that just beat Ramos, yep. that fought for a <clears throat> for world title yeah loss but he did fight for a world title josh kelly that went to the olympics he got a loss but he's you know he's mm-hmm. got back from it he's getting he's gotten better so i feel like those are two fights that we could definitely look at for for a near future yeah i mean the the belt holders are those guys that you even like you know obviously you might be a few fights away but guys like tim zoo and for sure you know what i'm saying like those are, fi- those are fights again that that we that we look at and we know we could that will happen. Yeah. I don't want to say that might. I, I know it will happen at the right time. And and those are fights that, again, if he's the champion when it's my turn, right. that's who I got to run through, you know? Right. Um, if it's Sebastian Fondora, whoever it is, whoever it is in that list, <clears throat> um, we're looking at every every fighter that is in the top 15 in every single lift, in every, in every single um, governor, um, governor's body. Yeah. Because those are fighters that at some point we're going to have to face. We're gonna, either going to be mandatory or once, once we become a world champion, they will be mandatory to us. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about sparring real quick, man. Um, we in the age where, like, sparring used to be a secret and nobody talks yeah. about it now. People putting sparring on the internet. It's like, I feel like those are old rules. So I like to talk about sparring now. But has there ever been a sparring session for you that, sticks out that was like damn that was hot like this was one this was a hard like i tell you like i, I interviewed david benavides um uh, recently and he told me i think he said he was 16 and he sparred triple g and he was like I, he was like that i didn't know who he was he was like triple g wasn't triple g at the time but he was like i sparred him and he hit me with a body shot that was like yeah trust him like, um, oh. well Again, I don't like talking about sparring. Yeah. I like to keep my, you know, the stuff private. And I spot a lot of great guys, Sean Porter, um, Tank Davis, mm. um, Adrian Broner. But the one that I feel, I mean, Daniel Jacobs, too. Oh, man. Okay. Miracle the man. ones that I have to, like, sit back and say, like, this was a great sparring session. Every time we spar, it was like fireworks. It was like main event type of, type of sparring was Robert Easter. Robert Ooh, Easter, Easter Bunny, Bunny Ooh, man, wow. he, was, he was great. He was great. He yeah. pushed me to new levels. I, I pushed him to new levels. I sp- um, was this his last fight or the fight before that? Yeah. Um, we, we were sparring partners. I think it was 2021 or 2022 that we sparred together. Mm. And, man, he's a great guy. Yeah. Um, somebody that, that, you know, I could call friend. And those were some good sparring sessions. Because we don't, we, like, with other people, like, um, Daniel Jacobs, I only had one. Um, Tank, I only had one sparring session. Yeah. Um, with Adrian Broner, I did have, like, a couple. But with, with, with Bunny... Because we were both about to fight, yeah. we had a lot of sparring sessions together. That's a good match. I like. I can see that just stylistically. Yeah. Cause yeah. Bunny Long with the jabs, so I can see that being real good work. For actually. sure. Damn. Okay. Um, obviously, you mentioned Tank. We gotta talk about Tank. You know, what I'm saying when you sparring Tank, right? Because you know, he's a guy that got the equalizer. Like he'll, For sure, he'll put you out. And 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 we saw it firsthand, like with somebody else in the ring with him oh, a yeah. big guy hey, we're him? talking about like like he fights 35 we're talking about like big guy uh, yeah and he got in there and he did what stopped he had to him do. yeah oh my god yeah, yeah tank like is scary because nah, stopping tank, people in sparring yeah, is like for sure what the and fuck? I, it's the same thing obviously um back to your question which i think is this that you're gonna ask do you go in there thinking that i was 
that damn his power yeah, yeah of course you go in there okay like i gotta be careful right. um but at the end of the day i have to work on what i have to do yeah. um he's very smart he's very smart in there he's very calculated you know he he takes his steps back he walks with you he he'll give you a faint mm -hmm. before he throws anything he'll you know he'll break you down little right, by little he'll get, so again because we only have one round to do together yeah we uh, i didn't get the full experience right, you, you get right, what i'm saying right, right. um but I could definitely see it in the eyes where he was like calming himself down, you know, pumping the jab. Um, I don't know where, just throwing the, the, the left hand, the right hook. Yeah. So he was very, he was very smart. Very you smart can see fighter. why he is where yeah, he is based on Yeah, for sure, that. for sure. Yeah. Off of that and, and off of all the, all the sparring that he had because we only sparred because I needed, I needed a round to finish my rounds. Yeah. And then he jumped in with his guys. Right. You <clears> could see the level of, of you know, maturity and, and, and IQ that he has. Sure. Um, obviously, you know, we mentioned Shakur earlier, Shakur Stevenson. That's one of the biggest fights in boxing that, you know, lightweight division where they talk about Shakur versus Tank. Sure. When you see that, just your boxing brain, right? Like, how does, how does Zan Desires analyze a Man, fight like that? You you can't. You can't. It's hard to, to try to analyze something like that because you have a fighter that that is great at his distance and Shakur Stevenson. He's not going to He's not going to engage too much where he's going to get in a, in a dangerous spot. Yep. Um, and then you have a guy in, in, in tank that is also really great with his distance, but has a crazy power right. with both hands. You get what I'm saying? So I feel like it's a chess match. It's a yeah. chess match. Whoever, yeah. whoever engages for that extra inch that he shouldn't be taking, you know, he's going to pay for it. Right. He's going to pay for it. Because right. at the end of the day, people, people say, oh, yeah, Shakur doesn't hit, but Shakur's sharp. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So the, the punch might not be strong or whatever, but if it's sharp and if it lands the right way, mm -hmm. you're going down. There, 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 it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who hit you before. If the punch lands and it's, and it's right on where it needs to be, you're going down. Mm, okay. Uh, who do you like today? Like, who do you watch as a fan? Like, mm. when you watching shit, like, I like, you know, I like this dude. Oh, in a, yeah, in a way. That's in a, a way bad boy, nice. the monster. You know, oh, it's God. nice. Um, obviously, yeah. Canelo. Yeah. Um, I like Tyson, um, Tyson Fury, and I do like um, Usyk too. Yeah. Um, Bivol, Bivol oh, is B -ball, nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bivol the way the way he box. I was hoping um, better be of. I know, I know. I was, me I was, too. I, me I too. Praying for that but, fight. But Bivol is really, really nice too. Yeah. Um. Man, I like Shakur. I like Tank. Yeah. And if we go, we go to like twenty six. I like Robesi Ramirez, even oh, though I like he, Yeah, Robesi. I couldn't believe smart. he lost that last one. Man, I did not was, believe you know, that. Was, I could not believe. I he lost was a money. Tough fight. He I was lost a tough money. Fight. I said, no way, Robesi's <laughs> gonna lose. It was a tough fight, but Damn. I did like Robesi too. Yeah, I like him too. I like him too. What about I? Right, you Puerto Rican? What about my boy Sabril Matias? How you feel he, about Matias? Man, he's a nonstop fighter. He's yeah. gonna he's gonna go out there and get the kill. You know, um, I feel like he's he's a good fighter, but. If somebody could find a way to pick him apart where the the coming forward momentum is not as much as was he used to, yeah, I feel like he could have trouble because I've never seen him box. Yeah. I've never seen him. I don't know, think he can. But I don't yeah, think I've, nev he, I've never seen him use some defense, yeah. um, like head movement. He's always you know protecting with the hands. Right. He's a great fighter on the front foot, but I've never seen him in the you know going backwards. But overall, I feel like he's a, he's a great fighter. Yeah. I mean, he's shown it. I mean, everybody that he put in front of him, he, going he goes out there and do what he does. Is that style hard for you? Like, those type of relentless, like, they don't necessarily box good, but the volume is high, Man, awkward it, punches. I feel like as long as you have the right training camp, for, like, for example, when I fought um, Valenzuela in Texas. Yes, I remember that. He fight. was a guy that was relentless. If you see his, his fight with Rocha, mm -hmm. um, with the French guy, he was relentless, nonstop, coming, punching. Mm -hmm. And we were able to... to to kill that momentum, right? Yes. Um, so I feel like if you have the right, the right training camp, the right directions from the team, there's, there's, should be an easy fight. Yeah. Just keep boxing, keep boxing, find your movement, and whenever you're ready, just don't let them set their feet. Those fighters are strong. Fighters that are coming forward all the time, just throwing bombs. They're strong when their foot, when their feet are set on the floor. If they constantly moving and 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 stepping, mm. they won't have the, yeah, they might hit you, but right. it won't have the same effect if they sit down in a punch and Absolutely. hit you. So Absolutely. yeah, I definitely like, I, I enjoy, 
I enjoy having to make those adjustments during the fight. Yeah. Okay. Um, who was your favorite Puerto Rican fighter? Like, is it is it Tito? Is it Miguel? Like, when you like, yo, this was my guy. Like for uh, me, when I was grew up, my, Floyd was. You know what I'm saying? Like, Floyd. I got Floyd. I got to go. I got to go with um, Miguel Cotto. Yeah. Um, that's where I grew up. Yeah. I'm a 2002 baby. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. Like, I'm only 21. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm 21. So that's that's the guy who I grew up watching. Um, obviously, Tito is Tito. Yeah. Nobody's gonna take that away from him. I mean, my mom tells me story. My, my, my team tells me story about when Tito used to fight. Mm -hmm. and, and I can only imagine how big it was. But for me, my guy was Miguel, the guys that, that made us um, get together as a family, as a team. Yeah. With Miguel Cotto. Did you ever meet him yet? Like, yeah. yeah. How was I, that? Like, what was the. You know what I'm saying? So the first time I met him, he was in Canelo. Um, what fight was it? The one in Miami. The one, the one he had in Miami in the Hard Rock Stadium. Oh, Canelo's? Um, Canelo, Canelo fight. Canelo fight. So he had that fight, and Cotto had somebody fighting in the car. You know, okay. he was, you know, he was part of the promotion. Yeah. And you know, my manager calls him, "Hey, Miguel, here's Xander. He's a big fan of you." I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I'm in front of Miguel Cotto right now. Like, I'm talking to this right. dude. Like, we're having a conversation. Right. And all he says is just stay focused. You know, stay dedicated. You know, the love, continue the love of the sport, and you know, good things will come. And then after we keep meeting, we kept, you yeah. know, just getting together. And he gave me his number. Oh, now I got okay. Miguel Cotto's number. Did I you could, hit him up? Did you I hit him up? Him yeah, for yeah, sure. You your face told him right number. now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up, but did you ever hit him up? Like, yeah, y'all no, start sure. building yeah, that yeah, relationship? Yeah, yeah, like, I always, yeah. you know, for for his birthday, when he was, um, when when last year, I, I hit him up. So you, you always, you know, I don't try to, I'm not a guy that is going to have somebody's number. Like, I have Eladio's number. Yeah. But I'm not gonna be bothering you, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll try to give you the space. I text you for, for sure. important stuff like your yeah. birthday. Um, like Eladio's when their Eladio's kids were born. Uh, um, born. I, I text him. Hey, congratulations. Yeah. So I do text him. I wouldn't say I text him every week. Yeah, you wouldn't be too thirsty yeah, with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do. I do text him. Playing it right. Yeah, you're playing yeah, it right. For sure. <laughs> no, for sure. Um, all right. Let's get into a couple boxing questions before we wrap up. Um, obviously one of the hot topics was Devin and Ryan Garcia, right? Like Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, that fight. Um, PDs came into play, right? Like the Osterine, they said first, it, it's, it's still up in the air because nobody really yeah. knows what's going on. It was like, <laughs> tested positive, and then it was like, we don't know, and this and that. When you looking at that fight, do you feel like PDs played a role in what happened? Like, so, regardless of if he did or didn't, so, I don't know. I'm just so, saying. you know, at the beginning, how I told you, like, weight doesn't matter? Yeah. Well, weight doesn't matter when you're hydrating back up. Mm. But weight does matter when you get on that scale, mm. right? Like if I go in that scale and those, the set weight is 154 yeah. and my opponent is 154.2, oh, you're going to have to lose those two ounces. Mm. You're going to have to lose them. And he, was, he wasn't two ounces. He was yeah, three, three pounds, pounds over. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So you're saying pounds. that's a lot. Like that, that matters. Man, like, that's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. I mean, I had a, for example, me being Devin Haney, mm -hmm. I had a crazy work, um, weight cut. I had to get down to 140, and Henny's a pretty big guy. Yeah. And this guy, he didn't struggle so much. He only got down to 143 and said, that's it. I'm wrapping it up. I'm yeah. going to call it a day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it plays a factor. You can see it even in the fight, during the right. night of the fight. You know, Ryan was just 10 times bigger. Yeah, he looked bigger. Ryan was just 10 bigger. times bigger. Um, and then by going back to the drug, if he, if he was positive or not, definitely plays part. I mean, okay. you know, you when, you when you injecting stuff to... to to be better, yeah. uh, you know, whatever it is, um, better, better conditioning or recouping better, whatever it was. Yeah. Man, it, it plays a factor because you have a guy here that is going 12 round all natural and is naturally getting tired mm. from punching somebody or from getting punched. <clears throat> and then you have a guy that is like, okay, 12 rounds, I can make it look like it's five. You right. get what I'm saying? Right, it right. does play a factor. Is that something that is on your mind just as far as your competition is concerned as you're stepping up and these fights get more crucial like you know i want to get tested and i want to make sure everything for sure is like for sure but like that again that's why you once you get into the rankings you get tested randomly yeah um i i believe i don't want to say i'm sure but i believe he was getting tested ryan was getting tested randomly throughout camp yeah that's what um, they said yeah so, you know, it comes down to that at the end of the day. We have to believe what, what, the, what the tests are telling us. And if the test three months ago is negative, but the, the test now is positive, then 
you know like, you yeah. probably you probably did something <laughs> in between you <laughs> get what I'm out, saying? Yeah, okay. so okay. so for sure like it, it plays a part it plays a part and and i do i do keep that in mind like let's make sure if they tested me they tested my opponent too yeah. you know what i'm saying and um now they are testing me yeah. so i'm so I you hope, were part of it. Yeah, you were part, okay. I, I, I am hoping that they're testing everybody else too. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the fight this weekend, man. We got the the five on five. Uh, some pretty good fights some on that, good on fights. there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Big Bang Zhang and Deontay Wilder. Um, that's a good one. What do you think? Like, who who you got on that? How man, do you see that going? Zhang is is a big guy. Yeah, Tyson. Um, not Tyson. Wilder has that that equalizer right hand where he could just stop the fight whenever he wants, mm-hmm. but it's 70 pounds difference. It's a 70 pound 70 difference. Crazy. And we saw what happened last time he had somebody with such different um, in weight with mm-hmm. Tyson Fury. Mm-hmm. He gassed out, you know, putting all that weight on him, um, gassed him out. So it could go either way. I feel if it goes to distance, Shane wins. And maybe before the 10th, um, Walter can stop him with a yeah. nasty right hand because Shang doesn't move the head so much. Yeah, he don't got a lot of yeah. head moves. He got a good jab, though, so that's the thing I'd be thinking. Maybe he could offset it with the jab, but... Yeah, but as a, as a you know, as him being lefty um, and, and Walter being righty, that right hand straight down the middle is right, right there. Yeah, you take true. that step to the outside, you know, yeah. and that's just me, like, thinking because I'm fighting a lefty. Right. That right hand is it's down right the middle. You. You, yeah. get, you take that angle away and it's over, you yeah. know? Yeah, okay. What about uh, Nick Ball versus Ray Ford? How you see Man. that? Like we were talking backstage, um, yeah. Nick is he's, he's aggressive. He doesn't yeah. stop coming for. He's like a bull. Um, before I feel he got the boxing skills. He got the experience. Yeah. Um, he showed um, his last fight when he won yeah. the world title, the relentless. Yeah. Uh, you know the heart that he has mm-hmm. to not quit, to not give up. Um, and I feel like he's gonna come. That he's gonna come into place. Uh, on on um, tomorrow night yeah. for him. Um, it's going to come down to that at the end of the day, you know, boxing skills and, and wanting it. And he showed that he has a lot of heart. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, yo, lastly, man, uh, who do you listen to? What do you listen to to get in your mode, your man. zone, where it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what kind of music? Who who you playing? I, lately, I've been playing a lot of like, um, Latin music, reggaeton, yeah. salsa. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm a big fan and... and Big friend of uh, Eladio Carrion, yeah. Mike Towers, Bad Bunny. I uh, played Mark Anthony, um, um, El Gran Combo, Frankie yeah. Ruiz. You know what I'm saying? So I, yeah. I kind of like keep a combination of, of everything. Right, right. But that gets me, that definitely gets me in my mood. Um, every, every, every fight, I try to make a playlist um, oh, okay. for the locker room. Oh, so, that's fire. You know, this Have you place, made it already? You started no, it? No, I, I already started it. I don't yeah, want to show yeah. you because it's right, not complete. Right, right, but, right. But, you know, we always, we always try to keep it, um, obviously, PG because ESPN is going to be there. Right, um, right. But with good music. Good, yeah. good sazón, como se dice en Puerto Rico. You know, okay. like how we say in Puerto Rico, the sazón is, is what you need for sure. Yeah. So, you know, just to keep it light. Nah, for sure. Uh, do you plan on bringing anybody out to walk with you? Because this is, you know, this the yeah. weekend. It's Puerto Rican yeah, weekend. Yeah, man. So I had... Who I you had, got coming out? <laughs> I had... Um, I had a, we hit up a couple artists. Um, unfortunately, they are all um, on tour. Eladio is on tour. Mike yeah. Tower is on tour. But I am walking with um, Fortin Tech. He's a okay. producer. Okay. Um, he made a, a great song for, for Puerto Rico with, with Eladio de la Ghetto and we sing. Fire. And so we're going to walk out with him and... and Put on a show for, for all the Puerto Rican fans. That's what's up, man. Next time, hit me up. I got my boy, Young Chimmy. You know what I'm saying? We got to get <laughs> Young Chimmy, man. You know what I'm saying? We got to put this together. But listen, sure. yo, listen, yo. I'm, I'm very glad you came no, on. Dope you, episode. Um, you know, good luck. I'm, I'm, I'm watching your career. I look forward to seeing um, how far you take this thing, man. Man, appreciate that. Appreciate the time. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Um, again, uh, I know we had a little confusion before, but yeah. I really appreciate nah, you know, all good. making the adjustment and being here today. Bro. Yo, man, dope episode of Cigar Talk. My boy Zan Desires, we out of here.